Welcome to A Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss important past paper questions on mechanics from May June 2022, Paper 1, Variant 1. In this video, we will discuss important concepts about mechanics by solving past paper questions. Let's study together, let's improve together. In today's class, we are talking about Paper 1, Variant 1 from May June 2022, and total time for this exam is 1 hour and 15 minutes, and total mark for this paper is 4. You should not use any correction fluid and also you should not write on any barcodes. On second page of exam paper, you can also find values of some important constants and maybe you will need some of them for some calculations in your exam. So if you need value of any constants, you can come back to second page and you can find value of constants. So this is very important point. You need to be clear that values of constants are given. So if you need, you can come to this page and you can find values of constants. On next page of exam paper, you can also find some important formulae, but these formulae are not all formulae you need for AS physics. So you need to be clear about this one. The first one, this is for uniform X accelerated motion you can only use this one if a is constant means a is uniform so this is very important point when you can use these equations only when a is uniform mean value of a is constant second one is about hydrostatic pressure you can use this one and in this formula delta h is the depth you can use this one and you can calculate value of p up thrust. This is new formula. This was not in 2021, but this is the new one in this list. So very important formula for up thrust. Next one is about Doppler effect for sound waves. This formula you can use when the source is approaching or you can use this one when the source is moving away. But observer is at rest when the source is approaching. So simply I can write down when the source is approaching. If the source is approaching, you can use fs over v minus vs times speed of wave so this one is the speed of wave so in this case observer has to be at rest you can also use this one when the source is moving away when the source is moving away observed frequency will decrease so we can calculate observed frequency by using same formula fs divided by v plus vs times v actually the better way of writing this formula is you can write down f observe this is equal to speed of wave means speed of sound divided by speed of wave minus speed of source and you have to multiply this one with frequency of source so this is a proper way of writing this form and this formula in the same way you can write down speed of wave divided by speed of wave means sound plus speed of source and you need to multiply this one with frequency of source so you can use this one when the source is approaching and also you can use when the source is moving away so this is when source is moving away and this one when the source is approaching and next one this is about electric current we also call this one transport equation very important formula you need to understand how to use this one transport equation so this one is transport equation and next two formulae for resistors in series then also for resistors in parallel. These are basic formulae. You will need this one for some calculations in your exam. If you're not clear about any formulae, you can come to this page and you can check. For question number one, we need to find out which term represents a physical quantity. Let's try to understand what is a physical quantity. When we can say a quantity is a physical quantity, a physical quantity can be measured. So the first property we can say a physical quantity can be measured. So we can call it a physical quantity if a quantity can be measured. But some quantities, for example, love, friendship, these are not physical quantities. You cannot measure them. And also physical quantity describe laws of physics. Or simply you can say it obeys laws of physics. Laws of physics. As I mentioned before, love 
friendship, these are not physical quantities. They do not obey laws of physics. So these are not physical quantity. Like friendship, love, these things. Can be made. It simply means that a physical quantity should have magnitude, must have magnitude, that it also can have unit. Unit is optional. Some physical quantities, they do not have unit. Like strain is a physical quantity, but it's a ratio between two physical quantities, so it has no unit. So a physical quantity must have magnitude and it should have unit most of the time. So we will use over this understanding of physical quantity and we will try to find out which quantity is a physical quantity. If you look at option A, this is not a physical quantity. This is just a unit. So this is not correct option. Percentage uncertainty is also not a physical quantity. Next one is quark flavor it means type of quarks like up quark, down quark. So this is also not a physical quantity. Spin constant is a physical quantity. It has magnitude and it also has unit. So this is our right option. I mean this is correct option because spin constant has unit and also it has magnitude. K is equal to F over delta X and the unit of K is Newton per meter and this one is a physical quantity for the second question we need to find out which two units are identical when expressed in terms of SI base units so the best way to answer this problem is look at given options and try to write down which units are not SI base units if you get these given options simply we can find out in this case joules is not SI base unit and Newton is also not SI base unit but you need to be very clear that newton and you they are si units but they are not si base units so first of all we can express joule and newtons into si base units first of all newton simply we understand f is equal to ma and si unit for si base unit for mass is kilogram and for acceleration is meter per second per second and for joules we can simply understand joules means w w is equal to fd and for force we have si base units that is kg meter per second per second and we need to multiply with m so simply we can say si base units for joules are kg meter square per second square now we can use these two and we can find our answer if you look at first option so this is joules per coulomb option a i will be writing here for a for option A, we can write down kg meter square per second square per coulomb. So here we have per coulomb per coulomb. And we also have in this case kg meter square per ampere per second square. Coulomb actually, this is also not SI base units. Coulomb we can also express C. This is coulomb. So Q is equal to IT. So we can say this is equal to ampere second. Q means Coulomb is a unit of charge Q and Q is equal to IT. So C mean this SI unit we can express in terms of SI base units. So we can replace C here now. We can rewrite kilogram meter square per second square and this one is divided by ampere second so we can say per ampere per second. So we can simplify this. We can write down kg meter square second cube power of second is minus three and power of ampere is minus one now if we compare these two quantities I mean if we compare this one with this these two are not identical it means option a is not correct now we can go to the second option means we can write down for b for option b we have joules so we can write down joules second on other side we can write down kg meter square per second for joules, we understand joules is equal to kg meter square per second square multiply by a second. Now, if we simplify, we will get kg meter square per second. Now, if you look at these SI base units and on right side, these two are identical. So, our answer for this one is B. So, B is correct option. You can also check C and D. They will not be identical. So, the answer for this one is B. 
You need to understand, Coulomb is also not SI base unit, but this is SI unit. So this is not SI base unit. Coulomb is not SI base unit, but Ampere is SI base unit. So it is not SI base unit. For our third question, it is given to us a value for the acceleration of freefall on Earth is given as 10 plus minus 2 meters per second per second. For this question, we need to find out which statement is correct. If you look at given options, this question is simply asking us about accuracy and precision. We need to find out is this measurement is it accurate or is it precise? So first of all, let's try to understand a little bit about accuracy and precision. Accuracy and precision. When we have understanding of these two terms, then simply we can find the answer. Accuracy simply means that how close calculated value is to actual value how close calculated value or we can say measured value is to actual value how close calculated value to actual value so this is how we can define accuracy accuracy this is how we can define so this is how you can define accuracy precision simply means that how close measurements are to each other means you take measurements and how close they are to each other that is the precision if they are very close to each other it means high precision if they are not very close to each other it means precision is low how close measurements are to each other how close measurements are to each other so this is how we can state precision measurements are to each other so this is how you can define precision let's try to understand this one with one simple example let's say we have actual value of g actual value of g is equal to 9.81 meters per second per second we have two different measurements let's say in one measurement we got 9.70 and in another measurement we got 9.78 so we have two values of G. In this case, this one is more accurate because this is close to the actual value. So this is more accurate. But if you look at precision, let's say we have one set of data. We got 9.8 and we got 9. Point, these are values of G, simply you can imagine. We got 9.9 .9 and we got 9.6. And we have another set of data and we got values 9, we got 10, we got 11. So in this case, this data is more precise because these measurements are close to each other. So this one is more precise. So simply we can write out this data is more precise that this data is less precise because readings are not too close to each other. Less precise. In a simple way, we can say if data has more number of decimal places, it means that data is more precise as compared with data which has less number of decimal places. So simply we can say number of decimal places. If higher number of decimal places, it means the data is more precise. Size. Now, if you look at 10, 10 has range, so we can write down 10. It has range from 8 to 12, but our actual value is in this range. So this one is accurate. I mean, this measurement is accurate because it is in this range. But this is not precise because it has no number of decimal places. If we compare this one with actual value of G, this value is more precise as compared with this value because this has no decimal places so this measurement is accurate but this is not precise so the answer for this question is a. because this is not precise up to 2 dp but our actual value is precise up to 2 dp so the answer for this question is a accurate but not precise for question number four it is given to us two cables are attached to a bracket and exert forces as shown we need to find out what are the magnitudes of the horizontal and vertical components of the resultant of two forces. So we need to find out horizontal component and vertical components of resultant force. So simply we can write down sum of horizontal components or you can say sum of horizontal forces and we need to find out sum of vertical components mean along y axis. For horizontal if we resolve this force into two components it has one horizontal component and it has one vertical 
vertical component. We can also resolve this one into two components, horizontal and vertical. So this force also has two components. First of all, we need to find the sum of horizontal components. So this horizontal component is equal to 15 cosine of 20 degrees. And this horizontal component is 6 times sine of 40 degrees because this is opposite to angle sine of 40 degrees so simply we can write down here 15 cos sine of 20 degrees they are pointing in the same direction so we have to add these two together 6 sine of 40 degrees so if we add these two together sum of these two will be equal to 18.0 newton so this is horizontal component of resultant force and direction of this one is to the right. Now we need to sum vertical component. So vertical component of this force is equal to 15 sine of 20 degrees. So if we take up is positive, if we take up is positive, so it means this component is positive. Simply we can write down 15 sine of 20 degree and vertical component of this force is 6 or sine of 40 degrees. But this is pointing down, so this one is negative. We have 6 or sine of 40 degrees and we can solve this one and the magnitude of this one we will get that one will be equal to 0.534 we are only concerned with magnitude so this is the magnitude of vertical components as magnitude of this component is positive it simply means that direction of vertical component of resultant force is vertically upwards so the answer for this question is c horizontal component is equal to 18.0 newtons and vertical component is equal to 0.534 newton so this is our answer and this question is simply about resolving forces you need to understand how to resolve forces into components for question number five it is given to us the curve line pqr is the velocity time graph for a car starting from rest we need to find out what is the average acceleration of the car over the first five seconds in order to calculate average acceleration we need to understand average acceleration simply is equal to total change in velocity over total time taken in this case total time taken is equal to five seconds so if we have value of v at this point we have the initial value of v that is equal to zero so we can simply divide we can find the difference and we can divide by total time taken and we can calculate average acceleration and other way to calculate average acceleration is simply we can connect these two points by a straight line and we can find the gradient I mean the total change in v divided by total time taken so simply you can find the gradient of pq but you need to understand if you calculate gradient of this curve at this point you will get value of instantaneous acceleration and if you calculate gradient at this point of the curve you will get instantaneous acceleration at Q you will not get average acceleration so that's the reason answer for this question is C neither gradient of straight line PQ